many decimal places do I run my answer to? What are the rules for addition and subtraction? I don't know the rules for multiplication and division. What even are sig figs? All of your deepest concerns about sig figs answered today. That's right, we're talking about calculations involving significant figures. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break hey. this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. On the count of three, don't even think about it. What is your favorite non-zero digit? Three, two, one, one. One. What's your favorite decimal place? Hundreds. Hundreds. What's your favorite total number of sig figs? Three. Did we just fall in love with sig figs? Yup. Yeah. Do you want to do another lesson on sig figs? Yup. Yeah. Let's get started. Calculations using significant figures. A lesson from the lab skills unit. Why do I have to use sig figs when calculating? Remember that sig figs are used to tell us about the accuracy of our measuring device. When we calculate something, we want to preserve the accuracy of our original measurements. Our final answer is limited by the accuracy of the least accurate measuring device. As a result, we generally run to fewer number places than our calculator gives us. So in other words, we really don't know all of those extra digits that our calculator gives us because the device that we use to measure just isn't that accurate. If you follow the forthcoming rules, you will always know how to round your final answer, instead of asking me how many decimal places should we round to. Sig figs count all the time. Always write the unrounded answer first, then round using the next door neighbor method. Pay attention to units. Rules for rounding, addition and subtraction. When you add or subtract measurements, round your answer to the same number of number places as your least accurate number. Usually, we simply look at the lowest number of decimal places in the problem. Okay, folks, we're gonna do some examples together. In each of these three examples, we have numbers that we are adding or subtracting. We're gonna write down an unrounded answer first with units, then we're gonna apply the new sig fig rules that we just learned. You ready, Foo? I am. All right, let's get started. So for example one, we have 64.25 centimeters plus 5.333 centimeters. What do you get as an unrounded answer? So an unrounded answer, I get 69.583. And we can't forget units. Centimeters. Looks good. All right, we're gonna look at our two measurements and determine how many decimal places each one of those measurements has. So for the first measurement, how many decimal places are present? So we have two decimal places. How about for our second measurement? Uh, we have three decimal Now, places. good. We are limited by the less accurate measuring device. So which one of these has fewer decimal places? That will be the two decimal places. Good, so we want to round our final answer to two decimal places. So why don't you underline those two? Okay. And we want to use that next door neighbor method again, so circle the three. Good. And what does that three tell us to do? All right, so since it's less than five, I'm going to drop the three and keep the eight. Sounds good. So final answer then? It's 69.58 centimeters. Good job. Moving on to example two, 12.4 milliliters minus 9.36 milliliters. Let's get an unrounded answer first. So I get... 3.04 milliliters. Good on the units. Let's look at decimal places again. How many decimal places are present in the first measurement? The first one I've got one decimal place. And how about on the second measurement? That one's got two. All right, again, we want to go with the lower number of decimal places, which and would be? That would be one. Good, so we want to round our final answer to one decimal place. Let's underline one decimal place. So that's the zero in this case. Good, and next door neighbor method? It's the four. Good, and what's that four tell us to do? Well, just like the previous one, it's less than five, so I'm gonna drop the four and keep the zero. All right, good, so final answer? 3.0 milliliters. Looks good. All right, example three, 19 grams plus 1.6 grams plus 55.19 grams. Unrounded answer. All right, unrounded answer, I get 75.79, and this is grams. Good. All right, how many decimal places does our first measurement have? It's 
So our first one, I don't even see a decimal point. So the first one has zero decimal Zero decimal places. places. So I guess not very accurate. All right, how about our second measurement? That one's got one. And our last measurement? Uh, that one has two. So again, we want the lowest number of decimal places, which would be? That would be the zero. Zero, all right. So if we were gonna round to zero decimal places, we're gonna be rounding to the ones place then. And so what are we going to circle for rounding purposes? Well, we're gonna circle the seven since that's the neighbor to the one spot. Good, and what does that seven tell us to do? Uh, the seven tells us to round up since it's higher than five. All right, so what's our final answer then? Final answer should be 76 grams. Excellent. You try part one. Please do these addition and subtraction problems, write an unrounded answer with units, and then using the new sig fig rules for addition and subtraction, write a final answer. Rules for rounding, multiplication and division. When you multiply or divide measurements, round your answer to the same number of total sig figs as your least accurate number. The decimal place of your answer usually won't correspond to your original measurements. Units can be a little tricky here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do some examples here. We're gonna do some multiplication and division. We're gonna get some unrounded answers first with proper units, and then we're gonna apply our new sig fig rule. You ready, Shu? Yup. All right, so the first one here, we're multiplying 3.35 meters times 4.669 meters. What does your calculator give you as an unrounded answer here? All right, it's kind of long. I got 15.64115. Okay, what is our unit? Uh, looks like meters. All right, so remember, this is multiplication here. This isn't addition or subtraction. So let's take a look at that unit again. Oh, so it's meters times meters. So meters squared. Perfect, remember the units can be tricky on multiplication and division. Okay. All right, good. So let's start applying our new rules to get our final answer here. So looking at our first measurement of 3.35, how many total sig figs are there? Uh, so total sig figs is three. Good, and the second one of 4.669 meters, how many sig figs there? That's four. All right, so our rule says we go with the least amount of sig figs. So which one has the least? So we want to round to three sig figs. All right, so in our unrounded answer, let's underline those first three significant figures. So that'd be from the left, right? From the left. Okay, so three's right there. Perfect, let's circle our neighbor. All right, we got the four next to it. All right, so what does that four tell us to do? Uh, the four says to leave the six and drop the rest of the digits. Okay, so what's our final answer? So I'm going with 15.6 meters squared. Perfect. All, All right. right, now, how come it has a different number of decimal places than each of the original? All right, good measures? question. Remember, this, these are different rules for multiplication and division. So in this case, a rule says the least amount of sig figs, not decimal places. So it's gonna look a little bit different from time to time. Okay, so I just have to get used to that. Got right. it. All right, number two here, we've got 100.0 grams divided by two liters. All right, so well, that's easy math, it's 50. Okay, good. 50, what's our unit? Uh, well, it's grams divided by liters mathematically, so grams over liters. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna go with our least amount of sig figs rules again. So how many significant figures in our first measurement? Uh, looks like we've got four sig figs. Good, and how many in the second? Uh, just one, actually. All right, so pretty inaccurate number there. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, underline our first significant figure from the left. All right, yeah, we wanna do one, right? So yep. just one. Okay, so let's circle our neighbor. Okay. And what does that tell us to do? Well, I just would have to leave it the same, but I can't drop it because it's not a decimal, right? No. So I just would write 50 grams per liter again, one sig fig. Sounds good. Okay. Number three, we've got 100.00 grams divided by 2.0 liters. Well, it's 50 again, I know, grams per liter. Yeah, it's the exact same calculation. Right, that's Okay, weird. we're gonna see how this one's a little bit different though. Okay. All right, so how many sig figs in that first measurement? Well, it looks like we've got five there. Okay, and how many in the second one? Two. All right, so see how this one's different from that second example? Yeah, they're a little bit more accurate. Yep, we have an extra significant figure here in that liters measurement. Okay. So we have two sig figs in our least, so what are we gonna do? Well, we can underline the two digits, but 
if we want to get two sig figs in our answer, it can't be 50, I don't know, 50.0 grams per liter. All right, so if we write out 50.0, how many sig figs is that? Well, that's three sig figs, actually. All right, so we want to get to two. Two, well, I know how to get one and three. I don't really know how to get two sig figs. So this is one of those concepts that's going to be new to a lot of our students. So okay. that decimal point becomes very important when talking about significant figures. So what would happen if we just wrote the 50 with a decimal point? So get rid of the zero? Yeah, 50 point. 50 point, that's weird. Okay, so 50 point looks weird, but I can see how it has two sig figs now because of the decimal being present. Yeah, so if we did our bookend method here and we just wanted to show that it was that many sig figs, we'd bookend what? Um, it looks like we would bookend just the five. Okay. And then N A T D. So since there is a decimal, that zero is significant and it is two sig figs. Exactly. All right. You try part two. Do these example problems of multiplication and division, write down an unrounded answer with proper units first, and then apply the new rules of multiplication and division to get your final answer. Rules for rounding, bonus! Many calculations in chemistry involve multiple steps. It is best to leave all preliminary answers unrounded throughout the problem. Only round for sig figs in your final answer. So sometimes we've got one calculation, we're done, you round for sig figs, but sometimes there's a whole series of calculations and students want to know, do I have to round for sig figs every time? The answer is no, just round for your very final answer when you're done with all the different calculations. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on calculations and significant figures. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by... Extreme Chores Motion Control Video Game. Get stuff done around the house without actually getting stuff done around the house. Like yard work, dishes, raking, litter box. Console not included. But we never off, we zone to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall they call S-Wing. You know we never wait.